I want to just take a moment and remind us of why we're all gathered. We're gathered around a baby. His name is Jesus. He's the reason we're here. He's the reason for this whole season. The Bible tells us he's the reason we live and breathe and have our life. And one of the major themes that jumps out at me as we've watched this production is the theme of reconciliation. And truth be told, the Christmas season, that's perhaps the greatest theme that is presented to us as well. Reconciliation. God and man. There's a verse in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, speaking of Mary, the mother of Jesus, it said that she would give birth to a child and she would call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. See, the name Jesus, it means Savior. He will save his people. He'll save you and he'll save me from our sins. That's the reconciliation that God came to bring. You see, because sin, which plagues each and every one of us, sin, it separates us from God. It cuts us off from the life of God. It sets us at enmity with God. And when we could not fix it, when we could not get to God on our own, God did the most amazing thing. Because of his great magnanimous love, he came to us and he reached out as Savior. Many of you would know the story. If we go back to the very beginning, to the creation account in your Bibles, it's in the book of Genesis. The story of Adam and Eve, the first man and the first woman, is God creates the universe. God creates the world, and he creates man and woman, and they live in perfect harmony. They live in perfect fellowship with God the Father, their creator. Things were as they should be. But we know the story, Adam and Eve, they make that fateful decision that they want to take control of their own life. They want to step out from underneath the authority of God, and they want to be the ones to decide for themselves what's right and what's wrong. And in that moment, as they disobeyed God and ate from the fruit of the tree, they were plunged into sin. They were plunged into this state of separation from God, cut off from the life of God. And the Bible tells us that sin entered the world that day and death entered very closely there on its heels. And the truth is, each and every one of us, because we are a part of the human race, because we are of Adam and Eve, we were born into this state of sin. It's hardwired into our DNA, if you will. The state of being eternally cut off and separated from the life of God. That is our position, separated from God because of sin. And the only way we could make our way to God is if we lived a perfect, sinless life. We walked that tightrope walk and had perfect performance. But the truth is, none of us have that, do we? No, the Bible tells us that we all have sinned. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So how do we find reconciliation? We find reconciliation in the person of Jesus. And that's who Christmas is all about. Jesus. God becoming flesh. When we couldn't get to him, him coming to us. And Jesus lived that perfect, sinless life that none of us could live. And yet he took the punishment for our sin upon himself. The Bible says that the wages of sin, literally the consequences of sin is death. And Jesus took our death for us. And he died in our place. But he didn't stay dead. God the Father raised him from the dead on the third day. And now because of his life, we have eternal life. We have hope if we put our trust in Jesus. If we put our trust in his finished work on the cross, we get a new position. In the Bible, it talks about Adam and his decision separates God from man, that sin that enters the world. You know, the Bible refers to Jesus as the last Adam, not the second Adam, but the last Adam. He came to fix what the first Adam screwed up. And guess what? There's not going to be another one to come. Jesus is the last Adam. His sacrifice was perfect, total, and complete. And if we put our faith and our trust in what he's done for us, the Bible says we get a new position. That position, it's called being in Christ, in Christ. And I love that because our position with God remains secure because it's in Christ. And I know sometimes we look at our own lives and we're like, well, how can my position be secure? How can, can my position be complete? Because my performance, it, it, it's inconsistent. And sometimes I do mess up and I'm not always perfect. But the truth of the matter is, it's not about our performance anymore. It's about our position. 
And although our performance at times can be inconsistent, our position remains the same. Our position, when we put our trust in Jesus, our position is we are in Christ. And this morning, let me ask you, are you in Christ? Do you find yourself in that place? The gospel message, what I'm talking about here, Jesus coming to the earth, the Savior of the world, it's, it's a simple message. It's a hopeful message. As a matter of fact, it's so simple, it can be summed up in two words. Perhaps some of you have heard me say it like this. The gospel can be summed up in these two words, became, become. Jesus became our sin so we could become the righteousness of God in him, in Christ, our position. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Can I ask you this morning, how's your position with God? Are you troubled about the state of your soul? Have you put your faith, have you put your trust in Jesus as Savior? Do you know Him? Not just know about Him. Many of us grew up in church. Many of us are familiar with the Christian story. I'm asking you more than do you know in your head about Jesus. I'm asking you, do you know in your heart? Do you know Him personally? Do you know Him intimately? Do you believe that He loves you? In the good moments, do you believe he loves you? In the worst moments, do you believe that he loves you? I'm here to tell you today, he does. And that if you'll respond in faith to what I'm about to offer you, you can have a new life. You can have a second chance. You can be born again. I wonder, would you mind just bowing your heads and closing your eyes just for one moment? If you're in this place this morning under the sound of my voice, and you've come to the conclusion that you need a Savior. Now, that's not something I can convince you into knowing. As a matter of fact, that's something that has to be revealed to you. The Holy Spirit has been at work. Even as I've been speaking, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to your heart, revealing to you your current status, your current position when it comes to your relationship with God. And if you're far from Him today, if you don't know Him personally and intimately as Savior, as Lord, as friend, if your position is not in Christ, I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to offer you that, that chance at knowing God. And in these moments, if you respond, the Bible says that God pours out his love into your heart. He makes you new on the inside. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament, he said, what you're about to do, it's so supernatural. It's, it's like being born again. He said, if any person be in Christ, they become a new creation. Something changes on the inside where all the old is gone and everything becomes new. I wonder this morning, could I pray with some of you today if you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, either for the first time or you realize at one point you had a relationship, but you've walked away from that. You've taken control of your life again back into your hands. And you know today you need to come back to him and you need to relinquish control and call him Savior and Lord once again. I wonder, could I pray with you as well? Well, here's what I want to do. In a room this size, I'm sure there's quite a few people. And I'm the only one looking around. I want to give you a moment of privacy. But if I were to count to three, would you be so bold to lift a hand? If you were to say, yeah, that's me today. I want to make Jesus Lord today. I, I would love to be included in that prayer you're going to pray. I wonder, would you lift your hand on three so I know who I'm praying with today? Here we go. One, two, three. All across this room, even in the overflow. Just go ahead and lift a hand if you want to in on this prayer. You're declaring, I want to make Jesus the Lord and the Savior of my life. Today, I want to let his love make me new. So many hands. Go ahead and put those hands down. I've seen them, but more importantly, God sees them. And he sees your heart. And to help us in this moment, I, I want to provide us some words. And I'm going to ask that you would pray them after me. Just repeat them with me. But the truth is, unless you put sincerity of heart behind these words, unless you connect your faith and your trust to these words, they're, they're just words. But if you'll pray them and if you'll mean them, God will meet you right now in this moment. And he'll fill you with his spirit. He'll make you new on the inside. Come on, can we all pray together to help those that lift their hand? Would you say this with me? Jesus, I need you. I ask you to save me. I come to the conclusion that there is sin in my life and that that sin separates me from God. 
but I trust that you took my place, that you took the punishment for my sin. And today I give you my life. Today I give you my heart. And I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That is worth clapping about.